I'm Marcus Hall, born and raised in Knoxville, Tennessee. As a child, my mother taught me to sew, and I started Mark Nelson Denim. It seems like everywhere we turn, we're faced with division, politics, race, social economics, and the list goes on and on. The one thing we have in common is we all need to eat. So I've been inviting people to cook their favorite meals and have real discussions about what's going on in the world and how we can come together. This is The Common Apron. <laughs> I would like to introduce to you my friend and not grill master, but pit master. I get corrected all the time. He's not a chef. He's not a grill master. He's a pit master. Yep. My homeboy, Brian Furman from Atlanta, Georgia. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing fine. How you Man, doing? thank you. Uh, listen, uh, this is, if you don't know, the Common Apron. First of all, I want to acknowledge that this is for Second Harvest Food Bank. Every apron sold from our Father's Day edition, uh, the portion of the proceeds goes to Second Harvest and $1 feeds three families. And so please go to marknelsondenim.com uh, to uh, get that apron for your wonderful dad for Father's Day or ktom.com. And uh, I'm sure he'll love that. So Brian Furman, uh, let's get started, my brother. I'm going to cut this piece right here off. Okay. And this is called the point of the brisket. So you have on a brisket, you have a point and the lean, and this is the fatty part um, of the brisket that takes forever for it to cook. Okay. Um, and basically what I'm trying to do is even it out as much as possible, so it's not uneven when it's cooking. So what I go is I come here, slice that right there. So when the brisket is cooking, it's kind of even. It's kind of have like a uniform to it. I don't trim too much of the fat off because it's gonna be cooking for 10, 12 hours. Okay. He used to be Bees Crackling, so if you followed him on Instagram and, and Facebook, this is Brian Furman, who's now Brian Furman Barbecue, used to be Bees Crackling, and uh, it's a, a, a thing in Atlanta, Georgia, that you had to go. He was visited by Martha Stewart, mm -hmm. uh, and so again, two years ago, Food and Wine Award, went to New York, had all these accolades, and then boom! Fire. Fire. <laughs> So then what happened, man? Now, you, you uh, after that, no, no, it didn't stop me. You know, it didn't hold me back. I just, uh, it just gave me time to, like, build up right for on. Brian from a barbecue. And during that time, that short amount of time in those five years, in four years, we opened five restaurants. Okay. So, like, in that short amount of time, Bon Appetit named me Georgia King of Barbecue. What's the next step for the uh, brisket? Uh, brisket. So brisket. next we go with the salt and pepper. So I don't do all this extra stuff, like a whole bunch of rubs. I keep my food simple. Um, and my dad always believed beef was supposed to be salt and pepper. He's been nominated for so many awards, uh, as ugly as he is even, that he's still been uh, voted. <laughs> yeah. so, 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 but anyway, you gotta try it. Now we have some, I mean, I, I got measuring cups over there. Well, that'll there, work, that'll so work, that'll work, that's perfect. That? Yeah. I just thought, you know, you were so skilled that uh, you, you know you, just, you didn't need that, but here. Well, we that's where consistency plays. Ah, <laughs> there you go. That you can't be too confident. Okay, now. See, I'm honest. Yes, sir. I like that. A lot of people didn't know I have epilepsy, so um, from anxiety. Wait, hold on, you have what? Epilepsy. I had no idea that you had epilepsy. Yeah, I don't tell a lot of people. Okay. Um, but I've had epilepsy for 31 years. So, stepdad, so, so you, your real dad, so where did the barbecue come from? Where'd you, my stepdad. Okay, so you He's from Miami. Himself, yeah. yeah, he's from Miami, okay. Florida. And right. so I met him when I was five. Yep. I started paying attention at home how he would go throw the ribs, throw the chicken, everything he was throwing on the grill was raw. And he taught me about fire control and stuff like that. Things that a lot of people don't talk about or train when they, I see these barbecue shows. Yeah. They don't talk about how to start a fire, how to shut the fire down. So we're going to we learn to do that today. So this is what I mean when I talk about fire control, starting the fire. Okay. Like once you put your charcoals in your charcoal chimney. Okay. You get them dumped in here. Um, if your fire goes down, then you get some paper towel so we can get another fire going. Okay. And once you got the paper towel in there, then you start throwing your wood chunks on top. All right. I noticed you're using apple wood and cherry wood. What's, mm -hmm. what's going on with that? Going, um, I like using um, fruit woods and mild woods. They're considered mild woods because they won't overpower the meat, like hickory or mesquite, okay. um, which is real powerful. 
So like when you go to some barbecue places, it's like you burp and smoke. Right. That's where they come from. You cook your meat at 250, right? So you get it Between up to 250, 275 okay. um, for fattier meats. Um, that's why I have the exhaust wide open. Right. And then this over here where the wood is at is wide open so it can get as much oxygen as possible. And if we get over 250, if you get to 300, you just come over here and shut it down. Never touch this part over here. You oh, so you use that to close it so to smother the fire a little bit, right? Yeah, I use that as my control. A lot of people be over here playing with this and playing with that. You leave this wide open if you're burning live wood because you want the, uh, as much oxygen to get to that fire. And you just leave this open. Okay. Um, and you control it off this. And I usually don't tell people this. And you I was know just this. about to say. Um, I was like, oh, it's the secret recipes in so there. So I leave... The, I use cardboard, and I put cardboard down on the grill because um, the high temp that I'm cooking the brisket at, the bottom of the brisket is real lean. There's no fat on the bottom. And if I'm cooking at 250, 275, that'll char the bottom of that brisket for that long cook. So cardboard absorbs the water and the fat, and um, you, you notice, like, it won't catch fire. Like, it won't cause a fire because of the water in it. So for you dads at home, you just got the power move. Use the cardboard, and that's the secret to keeping the brisket moist. Wow. You shared that. Well, that's all right, brother. I feel like Father's special, Day. right? Yeah, I didn't know this gift. was a Father's Day special, too. Okay, today. baby. All right. It is, my man. You. I'm a father, okay. so I'm going yeah. to give him the whole advice. I know, man. So, 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 so let's, outside of giving advice about the brisket, and uh, so your father... Uh, Tell us something about that. Do you want to I share? I got a 12 year old daughter named Nala and an okay. uh, 18 year old son, Nasir. Okay, right on. And Nasir works at the restaurant. He's been in there with me since he's been 12. Amen. So. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to meet your son. Yeah. And you trying to instill in him the yep. work and, and that whole deal. So mm -hmm. there you go. So, what I talked about earlier, turn this around because your heat source is coming this way. Um, you're going to put the point, the thickest part facing the fire and close. I usually don't open this when I'm cooking a brisket for maybe six, seven hours. Oh, wow. But consistently 250, 275. Yeah. And you're going to cook this brisket for at least six or seven hours. So this isn't something that you're going to do. No, you're going to keep the door closed for six or oh, seven okay. hours. Oh, okay. Door. You're going to cook the brisket for about 10 to 12 hours. Oh, wow. So depending again, on the weight of the brisket. This is planned. So you can't just go, oh, I'm going to cook a brisket today, guys. Yeah. I'm going to actually plan for this and prep. And then it's a, it's a half a day deal. Today, but wow. Uh, smells amazing. Looks amazing, and now uh, explain to the cut. You said you were saying something about when as soon as you get you don't cut the meat, right? I'll, I'll let it cool, a, yeah. I let it cool, let it cool, let it cool down, all right. And then all the uh juices absorb into the meat because if you cut it too fast, it just shh, okay. all the heat and it dries it out, okay. Right on then, all right. That's another thing I learned today. I did not know <laughs> that. Don't cut the meat as soon as it gets off the grill, let it cool down because the flavor and the juices absorb inside the meat, otherwise it'll evaporate because it's so hot. So let's do it, brother. Let's cut us some brisket for a brisket sandwich. Uh, happy Father's Day. Uh, God bless you. And again, support Second Harvest Food Bank. Each apron that you buy for your father for Father's Day, a portion of those proceeds go to fight hunger in East Tennessee. It's been a pleasure, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we're going to put some uh, sauce on uh, some of these buns in here. And because um, my crew is looking like they're about to kill. <laughs> they're like, ah, hurry up, damn it. Get ready to eat some barbecue. And so uh, thank you. God bless. And I'll see you soon.